our fifth episode of our culinary world tour. Today we are going to be cooking food from Angola. Angola is in Africa. Welcome to our episode on Angola. For today's episode, I have made um, two snacks. These are very popular food items and street food snacks in um, Angola. So the first one is made from cassava roots and this is made from peanuts. So the cassava root item is called bombo, bombo frito and this um, peanut brittle is called peje moleki and this actually translates to literally translates to brat's foot and it's uh, I think supposed to be shaped like this um, as you as you see the video you'll see why I was not able to shape every single one of them into a circle or cookie like shape but this is both of these are very delicious um, these are cassava root uh, fries and um, cassava root is used a lot in Angolan cuisine you can find cassava flour being used this is air fried so this part of the um, plate has air fried cassava fritters and these are deep fried it took me a while to finalize these two snacks for the episode one reason was that I was not able to find many vegetarian options to cook there are many exotic meats and meat dishes uh, if you're a meat eater to try out here and um, I really thought that I should try something new so peanut brittle uh, uh, is something I had not made before cassava I had never eaten before so I thought I would give these two a try and they turned out to be excellent options very delicious and I plan to make them um, again so let's see uh, how to make these two You can find the detailed written recipe on my blog uh, and the link to it is in the description below. We are making two Angolan recipes today. One is going to be a deep fried cassava root, uh, which are cassava chips and this is called bombo frito. And another thing we are going to make is something similar to a peanut brittle. And this is called Peje Moleke, sorry, Peje Moleki, or if the syrup is not caramelized, it is called, let me check, it is called Dose de Jinguba. So Jinguba is what is, uh, what, a, what peanuts are called, and I believe these are, uh, this has uh, uh, Portuguese influence, so these uh so the recipes I saw were really uh, either written in Portuguese or I had to use Google Translate and the language I identified was Portuguese. Now, uh, I couldn't find a fresh cassava root, but, if, uh, but the fresh cassava root would look something similar to this. You would need to peel it and then cut it into steak fries. So I believe this is a frozen bag of cassava root that I found in the uh, Asian store. And I, uh, as you can see, these are cut into cubes. I'm going to open it and check. Uh, this is the first time I'm using cassava. And cassava flour seems to be very popular in the Angolan cuisine. So yes, so as you can see, this is the cassava root. And uh, if you get the fresh ones, then you would want to cut it into uh, long rectangular pieces after peeling it. So the first step is to boil these till they're tender, but not too soft and then um, once they are um, drained we will deep fry them and for these the the peanut brittle I'm going to uh, caramelize the syrup so the first time uh, first first I thought you know I'll just make the dose de jinguba but as I read more about it uh, it sounded like peje moleki would be very close to what is known as chiki and is very commonly found in India as a snack. So it will be very similar to that. So for the first step for this is that I'm going to roast the peanuts. These are raw peanuts and 
you can buy you can buy roasted unsalted peanuts i'm out of them currently so i'm going to roast these peanuts and then remove the peels after roasting them so once you roast the peanuts it's much easier to remove the peels here is water that is coming to a boil and i'm going to drop all of the um frozen cassava into cubes into this and now we need to bring it to a boil and fresh cassava needs to be um, boiled for about 15 to 20 minutes but I'm going to check maybe after 10 minutes because these are frozen I don't want to overcook them I still want them to have some uh, texture uh, before we uh, fry it so our cassava um, has been boiling for about Three, four minutes and it's been in the water for a total of 10 minutes um, I think at this point it seems to be almost partially cooked um, so it's I'm going to treat it very similar to potatoes and since it's starting to look tender at this point I'm going to drain the water and let these cool down before I fry them so I have drained my cassava as you can see it's on a, a colander um, it feels very much like a potato it has a it is a little slimy I can feel the tar starch uh, in the cassava I'm going to let this cool down completely before uh, and dry and cool down completely before frying it you don't want to add anything that is watery into hot oil because that's going to splatter all over you so I'm going to let this dry completely and cool down before um, I go to the next step. So our cassava cubes have dried out and they're ready to be fried. I tasted one, it tasted very similar to a potato. So I think the end result is going to be really good. Um, what we have here is oil. I have about uh, three fourth of an inch um, oil in this small frying pan and I'm going to use it to deep fry uh, half of the cassava roots and then the remaining I will air fry in my air fryer the oil has been heating for a few minutes and it's starting to shimmer so I think it is ready I can smell it I'm going to add one cube of the cassava and see if it comes up um, quickly so if it comes up um, I've added it uh, it's come up fairly quickly so I think the oil is ready and I can add the rest of the cassava roots to it it's important to be safe while deep frying so I'm going to wipe these roots before I put it in um, out of precaution and uh, add them in very carefully and then I'm just going to let these fry till they are a golden brown color. These have been frying for about five minutes and are starting to get uh, golden brown. I'm going to let them fry for another couple of minutes. I'll just turn them around so they get evenly brown and then uh, maybe another two or three minutes before I drain them. So these have a nice golden brown color now and I think they're ready to uh, come out. They will continue to brown a little as they cool down. So I will get these out and put them on a kitchen towel to drain the oil and then add salt and pepper while these are hot so that it adheres to the chips. So I have removed the tissue paper so that it does not become soggy and now I'm adding the salt and pepper and these are ready to eat. So the second batch uh, I have tossed in a teaspoon of oil and I'm going to be putting this into our air fryer 
so i will put it into the air fryer and set it at a 375 fahrenheit temperature i'll cook it for four minutes to start off with and then increase the time based on how quickly it browns so these are starting to crisp up i'm going to shake this uh, pan a bit and then i'm going to let this cook for another four minutes and then check on it again so these are starting to brown i think another two to three more minutes and these should be ready this is our air fried batch it took about a total of 11 minutes for it to get uh, to this shade of brown and i'm going to toss it with some salt and pepper and these are ready to eat as well we are starting off on the peje moleki now and for this the first step is to roast the peanuts i'm going to roast them on the stove top but you can also do it in the microwave oven or in a regular oven so it took about five minutes to roast the peanuts they are quite warm again they will now peel very easily so i'm going to let this cool down completely so these peanuts now to remove the peel all i'm doing is rubbing the peanuts between my palms and the peel comes off and to separate out the uh, peanuts i can either just scoop them and separate the peanuts out since they will be on the top or i can shake my pan and honestly that's why i use this broad pan so you can see the peanuts being heavier have moved towards me and the uh, peels have moved towards the other edge of the pan and now it's just so easy for me to scoop these peanuts out without the peels so i will do this i'll separate the peels out and then we are ready to candy these peanuts so for the peanut brittle we have now our one cup of roasted uh, peeled peanuts one cup of sugar and half a cup of water i'm going to use just half of this water before uh, to make caramelized sugar syrup and then add the rest of the water to make the caramel syrup before adding the peanuts in so i'm going to add my sugar to this pan get rid of the lumps and then i'm going to add half of this water so it's about one fourth cup of water and let's see a little bit more and i'm just going to let the sugar get damp or wet and turn on the heat and just let it caramelize so i'm not going to touch the sugar i'm not going to touch it at all not stir it at all and just let it cook till i start seeing it caramelize so i have the heat turned on high heat and which is fine to begin with and then you want to turn it low once it starts to heat up but make sure that you're not stirring the sugar syrup at all so that it caramelizes as you can see the syrup is starting to bubble i am not going to touch the syrup till i start seeing some deep caramel color and since this is organic sugar it is not very white so just as it melts it feels like it's starting to caramelize but no not yet so as you can see it's still boiling away but no caramel yet it's been a minute as you can see it's starting to slowly change color and now it's starting to caramelize and it'll go very quickly now so i can stir it now get that beautiful color i can smell it now mm. so i'm going to take it off the heat look at this beautiful caramelized syrup um i will not add the water when it's very hot if i do that it will start spluttering and uh, cause a very huge sizzling sound so i'm going to uh, let this cool down a bit add the water and reheat it um, as you can see it has cooled down and it has thickened so hopefully it will not 
there we go so i have started heating the syrup and the lumps are dissolving as it heats up i'm going to heat the syrup up uh, till 132 degrees celsius which is about 270 fahrenheit and uh, i'm going to add a candy thermometer to the syrup to measure the temperature of the syrup and once it is closer to the hard ball stage i will add the peanuts in so i'm at the soft ball stage on my, th on my thermometer and so i think this is good enough let it boil and i'm going to add all of these peanuts in stir them well and then cook it for a minute or two till it starts to thicken and separate oh smells so good starting to thicken i think i'm going to let it boil for another minute before i pour it out into my uh, pan which i have lined with a, a baking mat or you could put parchment paper so that it doesn't stick and then we are going to let it cool down completely so as you can see uh, it's frothing nicely and i think it is thick enough and it's ready for me to pour into the pan what i saw was they had dropped it like cookies so i'm going to try doing that so i think time is of essence so let me just pour this in and we'll break it down so it's going to start thickening pretty quickly I can already feel it starting to stiffen up so this has been cooling for about 10 minutes it's still a little warm but it's starting to become brittle so you can see here it so I'm gonna break this up but this is very close to what we get uh, what we call as chicky in India um, it's going to be sticky as well. I think I could have added more peanuts in it. So maybe next time I make it, I will increase the peanuts to one and a half cup and use one cup of sugar for that. Um, so that there's a there's more peanut per, per brittle. So this is Bombo Frito and this is Peje Molik. Bombo frito is this is fried and this is air fried. Why don't you start with this? Okay. It's really crunchy. There is good salt and pepper. I think it's pretty good. You try the air fried one now from this side. Okay. It's kind of soft here, but it's still. Try this piece. Good. Maybe this will be a crunchier one. Okay. Yeah, it's still kind of soft, but it's actually pretty good. You try this one. This is uh, like a peanut brittle. So why don't you try one of these? Okay. It's nice and crunchy and it's candy-like. Mm, do you like the caramel? Yeah, it's pretty good. Thank you. 